Last time, we explored how machines learn from data. But how do we actually tell the machine what to do? How do we speak its language? The answer for almost every AI developer is Python. Welcome to level one, module three of our free AI online course. This is where your AI journey truly becomes hands-on. We're going to dive into Python, the programming language that powers the vast majority of AI and machine learning applications today. Don't worry if you've never coded before. We're starting from the very beginning. So first off, why Python? Why not C++, Java, or R? Well, Python has become the undisputed champion for AI development for a few key reasons. First, its syntax is incredibly clean and easy to read, almost like plain English. This makes it perfect for beginners and speeds up development for pros. Second, and perhaps most important for AI, is its massive ecosystem of specialized libraries. We're talking about powerful tools like TensorFlow, Scikit-Learn, and the ones we are focusing on today, NumPy and Pandas. These libraries provide pre-built functions for complex AI tasks, saving you countless hours. And finally, a huge active community means endless resources and support. Plus, Python is versatile enough for almost any task from web development to data analysis. Before we write our first line of code, let's talk about your workbench. We can use many tools for Python, including Google Colab, Jupyter Notebooks, or even an integrated development environment. In our case, we're going to use something that runs right on the browser like Google Colab or Jupyter Notebooks because we need nothing to install on our machine. We recommend setting up Anaconda. It's a free, easy to install distribution of Python specifically designed for data science. And within Anaconda, you'll be using Jupyter Notebooks. These are interactive environments where you can write code, see the results instantly, add notes, and even display visualizations. Perfect for AI development. But guess what? You don't even have to install Anaconda. You can use Anaconda on the cloud and then you skip the installation and everything will be seamless. It runs perfectly fine on your browser. All you need is an internet connection and a web browser. So let's try some basics. Now, every powerful AI model starts with fundamental programming concepts. Let's look at the absolute basics that you need to master. First off, we got variables and data types. Think of a variable as a named container for data. You can store numbers, text, true or false values, and more. These are called data types, and Python handles them intuitively. In this piece of code, you store your name, into the name box and give it a value of vi, v. You also store your age, 21, and number into a box or a variable called age. We can now use these variables that have been stored, the string or the integer, to print out on our screen as an output. We use the print function, which can take one, two or more variables separated by commas and prints them neatly for us on the screen. We can also use Python for doing math. It works just like a calculator. Once again, we can store our variables, in this case, integers, five in variable A and three in variable B. And with those, we can perform addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and even a lot more computations or operations. Next, we have control flow and making decisions. If 
elif and else are statements that allow your code to make decisions based on conditions for instance if it's raining take an umbrella or else wear a hat now still talking about control flow we have ways in which we can repeat actions these are known as loops we let our code repeat actions using either a for loop which is great for iterating over a collection like going through a list of names or a while loop which continues as long as a condition is true now let's move on to lists and loops a list is like a uh, shopping list it holds multiple values meanwhile a loop lets you go through each item within this list and do something with it just like checking items off of a list so to write a list we use square brackets and we assign it to a variable the variable has to have a unique name that is mnemonic now we use for loop to loop through each of those items within that list use some mnemonic names for your code and then in this case it's simple we just print that we like the foot within this foot list now let's talk about functions the function is like a recipe you give it ingredients that is the inputs and it follows a series of steps and gives back a result which is the output the function is usually written starting with a def keyword which stands for defining a function and then we give it a name in this case greet you want your name to actually mean something so when you come back to your code you don't get confused and you can have inputs some functions don't have inputs others have inputs and whenever we want to get something out of our function our output we use the return keyword and we say what we want to have as an output now after creating this function with the def keyword and the name we can call the function or execute the function later on by just providing that name that was given to the function and any input parameters that were decided during the creation phase of our function that's about it and once you create the function once you can use it multiple times as many times as you need so you don't have to redo work and it helps with reusability now on to our libraries let's start with numpy while python's basics are great when it comes to the heavy lifting of numbers especially for ai we rely on numpy numpy provides incredibly fast and memory efficient ways to work with large arrays and matrices nd array which is its core object is an n dimensional array think of it like a super powerful list that can handle mathematical operations across entire arrays with lightning speed this is crucial for the complex calculations in machine learning algorithms now we also have operations you can perform element wise arithmetic complex linear algebra and even more at a very highly optimized speed now on to pandas your data maestro once you have data you need to manage and manipulate it effectively that's where pandas come in it's the go-to library for data analysis and manipulation in python pandas introduces two key structures series for one-dimensional labeled data and most importantly the data frame think of a data frame as a powerful flexible spreadsheet or a sql table right in your python code now let's talk about some common tasks with pandas with pandas you can easily load data from files like csvs 
comma separated values or select specific columns or rows. We can filter data, we can handle missing values and perform powerful aggregations. All essential steps before you feed that data to your AI models. Check out a lot of our projects and a lot of previous videos on this same channel. Make sure you subscribe and like. Save them to watch later. There's so many examples of Python and Pandas projects that will really help you get better. Now, let's talk about how Python becomes very powerful. Python is a powerful tool mostly because it has so many libraries. For instance, NumPy and Pandas. NumPy, Numbers for Python, is a supercharged calculator for working with numbers. White Pandas is like Excel inside Python. It's great for handling tables of data. In order for us to use these libraries, we need to either install them first, if they are not in our system, then import them. In this case, we get to just import NumPy. We give it an alias so we don't have to spell NumPy all the time. We can simply write NP. And uh, now we can work with NumPy once it's been installed and imported. We can now say, hey, I would like to create an array. The array should be a NumPy array, np.array. Array is a function or a method within the NumPy library and we provide it with the values. Now we can perform computations on that array when we use ARR multiplied by two. It's going to multiply two by every single value within our arrays or it's um, again the array is like an advanced list. Okay. Now for pandas, just like NumPy, we get to import it. But make sure you have it installed on your Python environment before importing it. Once we've imported it, we're giving it an alias PD. We can now say, hey, our data is going to be in a tabular form. Think of it like a spreadsheet. But now we're going to use curly braces to have our data within. So in here, we're going to say, we're going to have two names. The names will be provided in square brackets. The name gets tied to a list, like a dictionary. And the age is also provided in a list with square brackets. So the first value in the name matches the first value in the age. The next value in the name matches the next value in the age, and so on. With that, you can create a data frame. So next line of code, DF, which stands for data frame, we create that by using PD, short for pandas, and creating a data frame from our data that we already have a dictionary. Now we can print that data and we can also output a lot of other items or things from that data frame, like the description, the length, and some statistics. So, with everything we've gathered so far, we can now jump into a mini project. So let's build a simple tool that calculates body mass index, BMI, which is a basic health metric. Now to calculate that, we're going to need two inputs, the weight and the height of the individual. So BMI, again, the computation is usually the weight divided by height squared in meters and in kilograms per se. So we already know that computation, we can now print the value based on the inputs that we have. Just like that, we built a real world Python tool and with such small steps, we can definitely grow our real skills. Now, this module has been packed with practical learning you have coding exercises where you apply these Python fundamentals, like creating and manipulating NumPy arrays and performing real data analysis using Pandas. This hands-on experience is key to solidifying your skills. So, to recap module three, 
You've learned why Python is the language of AI. You've grasped its core programming concepts and got introduced to NumPy for high performance numeric computation as well as pandas for powerful data manipulation. You now have the foundational coding skills ready for AI. If you need more Python skills, check out our free and comprehensive Python programming, very friendly for beginners. I encourage you to start from module 1.1 to understand the things you need to know before you start programming and what you need to do before you start programming. Check out the links in the description and at the top of this video. Now, this is where it all comes together. In level one, module four, which you see next, you embark on your first complete AI project using all the Python, NumPy and Panda skills you've just learned to build a linear regression model, either for house pricing prediction or for employee salary prediction based on years of experience. Are you ready to start coding and building? If you haven't already, enroll to our free AI online course today. Level one, again, is completely free to begin. Visit our website or scan the QR code at the bottom. Thank you, and I encourage you to join V2SDK Foundation community by subscribing to our channel, follow us on LinkedIn and Facebook, because your journey to innovate, create and lead in AI continues. See you in module four. This is V2's DK and you already know.